everyone. I am back with another JMT gear video. My cat here. My last video, I talked about some of the essentials that I brought on the JMT, but none of those were like the fundamental items. So I just wanted to go over um, my four main items that I took with me on this trail. So backpack, sleeping bag, sleeping pad, and tent. And hopefully they can help you if you are looking for any new gear, if you're doing the JMT. Uh, talk about the pros and the cons of everything. By no means am I a gear head. <laughs> I'm not that advanced. I don't know most of the technical stuff. Uh, I've been backpacking for six years now, which I feel like is long enough to like finally have gotten a handle on like all my preferences for the first time this year. Started six years ago getting basic gear from Amazon. Not sure if I wanted to stick with it, like a $70 backpack from, from Amazon that didn't fit. Uh, a $30 sleeping bag that I had no business buying because I was freezing and a $12 foam sleeping pad that I threw away the second I had finished my last night in Yosemite, but you can only go up from there. So yeah, this is where I'm at with gear and the gear that I took on the JMT. So the first thing and the most exciting piece of gear, in my opinion, um, and probably the one you spend the most time researching, is the pack that I brought. So mine that I ended up with was the Hyperlite. Okay, this, this is not a very flattering angle. This is the Hyperlite Mountain Gear uh, Southwest 3400. It is a 55 liter bag. Normally I carry a 60 pound, or sorry, not a 60 pound, a 60 liter Osprey bag, so almost comparable in size. Obviously a lot different in the way the bag is structured compared to an Osprey bag. It's about half the weight. If you're like me and you're coming from something like Osprey, which is like the Harley Davidson of backpacks, it's super comfortable, it got all the bells and whistles. If you're used to all the nicely segmented compartments of that, this bag can be a little bit much to get used to. I like being really organized on the trail this just forced me to organ be organized in a different way since it is essentially one giant what this is this is all just yeah one one giant pocket it does have a little bit of a sleeve for a bladder if you're going to bring a bladder i just use that as a pocket as like my only interior pocket i didn't take a bladder with me um, but overall i really really enjoy this pack as you can see, it does get dirty quickly, which, I mean, you're in the backcountry, why do you care what your bag looks like? Um, you can get the black one if you care about that. It has one giant pocket in the front for all your goodies, anything that you want reachable for that day. I would put the day's food in there. Also has two fairly decent sized side pockets that we just put water. Oh, there's still sunscreen in there from the summer. It has two hip belt pockets. Um, there isn't very much padding on the hip belt. If you're coming from a bag that has a lot of padding, this might be an issue. I know that I've heard some reviews where this rubs people's backs. I didn't have any problem with it. I'm pretty bony um, and I thought it was perfect. The one thing I did have to get used to, however, was <laughs> the suspension system or lack thereof. The Osprey that I have has that really nice mesh like gravity suspension system. Um, so your back's never touching your bag. It lets your back breathe. This one doesn't have anything. Your back is just against the bag. I honestly, I thought it would be a bigger issue than it was. I didn't notice anything. Maybe it's just the way that I carried, that all the weight gets carried. Or I was just really sweaty at that point anyway. So a sweaty back, just, you know, whatever, you're sweaty. I obviously, this is more of an ultra light bag. Again, I think it was two pounds. You can carry, I think I, I don't think I exceeded 30 pounds. Maybe on our resupply days, it would be pushing it. The website says it can carry 40. I would not recommend it. It probably can carry 40, but you're probably going to be pretty uncomfortable. There aren't a lot of ways to adjust it. It doesn't have load lifters on the strap, so you can't like adjust the pulling on your shoulders or how far from your back it is. And this was the one thing I found right after a resupply uh, coming <laughs> out of MTR on that like 2200 foot ascent up first thing in the morning with a full pack and a full bear can. Uh, that was the day I had a meltdown because this was just pulling on my shoulders 
so, so much. It wasn't the way I packed it. I, I've learned how to pack it um, and it's, it's not a big deal. It was just more weight than I was comfortable carrying. But again, it gets lighter from there. You deal with it, you pop some Advils and it's fine. It is a water resistant bag. Um, I'm not a techie, but I know enough to know that this is Dyneema, yeah? which I think means water resistant. I wasn't really able to fully test that out because we didn't really have rain on the trail, but I did have a pack liner just in case rather than a pack cover. I found this is really awkward to put a pack cover on um, or I should have just gotten one that fits. I was using my Osprey one. But all in all, I, I really like this bag. I would recommend it. I know everybody has their preferences. Dan used a Mariposa, uh, Gossamer Gear Mariposa. He really liked that. I know the Z-Packs are popular. I bought this last year in anticipation of the JMT this year because I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't using it for the first time on a long hike on the JMT. So I took it out for a week in the mountains of Killarney National Park, or sorry, Killarney Provincial Park in Southeastern Ontario. And it held up beautifully. It was awesome. One thing that is difficult, if you have a bear can, I know you don't need a bear can everywhere. If you're taking a bear can, like on the JMT, it will fill the majority of the bag. So you are going to learn how to pack around it. Uh, that took me a good four or five tries, obviously before we even hit the trail to make it work because everything is oddly shaped. This isn't a problem, I don't think, if you don't have a bear can, um, but some things are really just hard to pack around it. I know you could put your bear can on top. If you're like me, I have a Garcia, an older can. It's like weirdly tapered at the end. So it just like kept sliding around and I didn't trust it to not fall off. I know that's a stupid thing because I would for sure notice if it fell off. But yeah, everything that I needed fit in here. If I'd had the gear I had last year, which was not ultra light, it definitely wouldn't have fit. Um, but with the gear that I got this year, everything was perfect. It was perfect. I will use it again next year. One thing that I don't love is that I've only had it for two years and this came off, which seems arbitrary, but like, I don't know, it makes me sad. Um, and I also have a GoPro that I got and it comes, well, it had a stick. So this is how I filmed everything. I just stuck my GoPro in here, button would just turn it on and off as I walked. Uh, wasn't really an issue, but yeah, all in all, for like 3400 Southwest, you can get different models, you can get different sizes. I know some people take smaller ones on the trail. I can't, I can't do that. 55 liters is perfect for me. You can even size up if you want. Uh, yeah, that's my bag. Next thing I will talk about is my sleeping bag. Uh, debated a little bit between a sleeping bag and a quilt. I like the feeling of being claustrophobic. I like feeling snug as a bug. Um, so a quilt wasn't something that I felt like I was ready to try. Um, so I just went with a bag. I haven't really seen many reviews on this prior to buying it. I saw one really solid review and then a bunch of reviews that um, ended up actually really helping me because the negatives that they had found with the bag I took as positives, which I will talk about but anyways this is the Thermarest Hyperion uh, 20 degree Fahrenheit minus 6 degrees Celsius bag as you can see it's pretty small um, I don't store it like this I just packed it so you can see how little it was it's one like 1.1 pounds or something it's just the regular size super small super lightweight again with this hyper light bag needed something really small I loved it. It does fit really, really snug, which was the main complaint of a lot of people. So if you are a side sleeper, I'm a side sleeper, but if you're a side sleeper, you're not going to be able to move around much in the bag. You're not going to be able to roll around inside the bag. If you go on your side, the bag is coming with you. The pro of that is that you don't get any cold spots. Uh, all the bags I've had prior to this one, usually I just I take synthetic bags, but they end up being huge on me. And then I get cold spots near my hips and near my feet, no matter what I put in there. Sometimes I try to stick my puffy coat in those spots to keep them from getting cold. This just meant that I didn't have to worry about that at all. The whole thing was warm uh, between this and my sleeping pad and my little down booties that I talked about in my last video. It was, it was perfect, honestly. Comes with its own stuff sack, not waterproof, but nevertheless, 
good to have. And if you have a pack liner, not much of a worry anyways. The other good thing about the sleeping bag that I like is if you have a Thermarest sleeping pad, it does have straps um, that will go around the pad so that this doesn't slide off. I tried using it with my sleeping pad and it was, it was fine. The only annoying thing was these straps kept coming off more than anything. Uh, so I don't think the other ones are even on there right now. But yeah, it's great. I wish it had a collar here. That's probably the only thing I would change about it just to keep a little bit more air in. The zipper is really good. The hood obviously is great. It's 900, I think it's a 900 fill bag. Got the drawstrings. And the one nice thing about this, I know that Western Mountaineering and Feathered Friends and Enlightened Equipment, those are all really, really popular brands. And Dan got a Western Mountaineering bag, but they pack so huge. They, they pack enormous. It was like three times the size of this one. Um, and also the price, I, those were, I think his came to like almost $800 Canadian. I was not ready to fork out that much for a bag that was, yeah, I was not ready to fork out that much. So this was kind of a nice mid-range option. I think it was around 500 or 550, which is obviously more expensive than a synthetic bag, uh, but less expensive than the really, really, really hefty like Alpine bags. So I thought it was a great compromise. I will use it again on other trips. Like I said, it does fit really, really snugly. So if you are like broader shouldered, even like bigger hips, there are other sizes you can get, you can size up, but it will be a very, very snug sleep for you. Nevertheless, super awesome, really glad that I bought it. The other main component of my sleep system was the sleeping pad. Another thing I spent a lot of time researching before I landed on one. Ultimately went with, if you saw my last video, the Nemo Tensor Alpine. Great little guy, packages down really, really small. I'm not sure what the weight is. I know the other model, which I can't recall, but the Nemo Tensor something, or maybe just the Nemo Tensor. I don't know, that one was available too. This one is for colder sleepers or for colder weather, so it's the Alpine one. Um, it has an R value of 4.8, which other than the Thermarest Neo Air X Therm was the highest one I could find, but Based on experiences with our Xtherm a couple of years ago, I just didn't really want to go that route. Um, I like Thermarest for a lot of things. I have a couple of their sleeping pads that I do love, but not that one. And I knew I was going to sleep really cold, so I wanted to get a cold uh, sleeping pad. Normally on our trips, we've been using the Xped Sinmat Duo, which is just like a nice double-sized one. Obviously you can't change the R value on that. So Dan is a really hot sleeper. I'm a really cold sleeper. It was time to get our own sleeping pads. Uh, the bonus with this one is it comes with the pump sack, which other than the X pad, this is the first time I've seen it. Maybe it's standard issue now for the pads that are coming out, but it's so nice not to have to get to camp. And then my duty is always setting up the tent. So I would have to blow everything up, blow the pads up, blow the pillows up. By the time everything is done, like you're pretty lightheaded. So it's nice to have the pump sack technology that just fits nicely in here. Also the repair kit is in here as well. Somewhere, I think, yeah, it's like actually attached in here. So you won't misplace it or lose it. Uh, and unlike the Thermarest or some other sleeping pads, it doesn't sound like a bag of chips when you use it. It's so annoying waking up in the middle of the night every time that the person you're with is like changing positions. Obviously you don't have to worry about this if you're sleeping by yourself or you're just waking yourself up. But yeah, the fabric isn't crunchy. It's got a really nice feel on the finish. It's fairly substantial. Um, this is a nice three inch thick pad, which means if you are bony and you, see, you sleep on your side, you are not going to feel the ground through your hips, which can wear on you. That was the biggest thing that I found with a $12 foam pad is you will feel everything. So this was like super luxurious. It wasn't the cheapest option. It wasn't the most expensive, but you know, when you get to this point in the game, as we all know, the lighter you get, the more expensive things get. It's small, it's light. I would highly recommend it. Uh, yeah. Great, Nemo Tensor Alpine.
Okay, so the last of the big four items that we brought was our tents. I will start off by saying uh, I, do, I do not recommend the tent that we brought. This was the only piece of gear that we didn't upgrade for this year. Uh, or we, this, is the only, this is the only item we haven't upgraded in a couple of years. We have used this tent um, for the last three years on multiple trails. Uh, Yellowstone Glacier, we used it in Killarney last year in Ontario, and we just brought it for the JMT this year. Not ultra light. I'm sure you can pack this much better. It's just kind of been thrown in here. This is the MSR Hubba Hubba NX two person tent. Not ultra light, but also not super heavy, just like really bulky if you're taking a, like an ultra light bag. Like, look how much space this takes up. Anyways, Dan took this part. I just carried the poles. When this works, it works really well. We didn't have issues with it our first year when we were in Glacier uh, and Yellowstone. We had a bit of like condensation issues, but that was more your more or less user error. It was really, really, really humid and rainy in Glacier, and we weren't used to super rainy weather like that. So that was a learning curve. But the reason I would not recommend this is the poles. So we had this last year in Killarney in North, or sorry, Southeastern Ontario. Apparently I don't know where I live. And we got to our site about halfway through the trail, maybe night four. We knew the rain was coming. We knew a storm was coming. So we tried to set up as quickly as we could. We got to our poles and we found that one of these silver joints was missing. We couldn't explain its absence. It wasn't on the ground. We couldn't see it like in uh, the outer portion of the pole. Like sheer, sheer panic took over at that point. We tried using duct tape with like twigs and stuff as the joint. That didn't work. In the end, luckily we ended up having, like we have a lot of extra carabiners. Carry carabiners with you. You never know when you're gonna need them. We basically MacGyvered a solution where we popped out this little center piece. We stuck it in here, used it as a joint, and then duct taped it. Um, we ended up not having enough duct tape, so we had to find some folks that were camping about a mile away and borrow their duct tape. And luckily, with a wad of that, uh, the joint held. We were able to get the tent up. It was not perfect, but at least it was up. Uh, but that was the moment where we were kind of like, we could very well be without a shelter right now in the middle of the trail. Luckily, it was a busy time of year. It's a fairly busy park, um, so there were people close by. But it was like, you know, that moment when everything flashes before your eyes. It was like, it was not fun. Um, the next day, we thought we would have to deal with the same thing. We got to our next campsite. Turned out that the little silver thing had just fallen down like the shaft of the outer shell, and it popped back out. And it was fine, but like if that hadn't happened, I, I don't know, because if you can't hold tension in the poles, you can't hold tension in the tent, how do you get your tent up? I don't know. Maybe there's ways to do this. I am not experienced enough. Anyway, so we thought that was a one-off, but then this year, our friend that we were hiking with also bought this tent a few days prior to the trail. Um, it was kind of a last minute purchase. He just decided to go with the new tent, so he did. And about halfway through the trail, same thing, it happened again. Only his wasn't inside and he couldn't find it and he couldn't pull it back out. So luckily we had duct tape and we had a solution for this. And the next night we actually stayed at a campsite with a man who had been carrying a tent repair kit or like pole repair kit for he said 10 years, just in case anybody needed help. And until this point, nobody had needed any help, but like, thank God he was there, right? place at the right time which always seems to happen on the trail lesson learned I guess carry a repair kit but bigger moral of the story I would not trust this tent if you were not oh well I just wouldn't trust this tent for me it's not worth it to have something like this that has now happened twice to two different uh two separate tents no I would not recommend it again it's good when it holds up next year we may go the route of well, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if we'll get a freestanding tent. I don't know if we'll get one of the tents 
uh, like the Z-Pax ones where you use your poles. My only worry with those is wind. We had some pretty extreme wind on the JMT and I don't know how do those hold up when it's really, really windy. Do you lose a pole? Does it fall down? I don't know. This did, help, this did hold up very well in the wind. I will give it that. But for the size that it is, for the issues that it has, I would not recommend the MSR Hubba Hubba NX, unfortunately. Okay, so I guess I can talk about one more item, which is just as crucial as all of these other items, which is footwear. So normally on the trails, or at least the last couple of years, I have been using the Solomon Boots GTX something something, I don't know. They are waterproof, they're really lightweight. I've had no issues with them. For this trail, I wanted to go the route of trail runners. If you've seen my other videos, my foray into trail runners did not go as planned or expected, but that's okay. I think it was more or less user error on my part and not the actual product itself. I actually really liked these shoes, so I ended up with the Ultra Superiors. A lot of people like the Lone Peaks. I just felt like I was wearing like flippers in them. They were way, way, way too big. These ones are a little narrower. Uh, I think they are specifically cut for women, so through the mid area here it's narrower and it still has the wide toe box, which is really nice for like splaying your feet, uh, your toes on the rocks and everything. Overall, a really great shoe. I tried a lot of different brands before ending up with the Ultras, but I found them to just be like a really nice amount of cushion that didn't seem to compress too much. Maybe it's just because I'm lighter but they held up fantastic through the whole trip obviously like a little bit of wear can be seen on them from going over the passes a little yeah not not in the best condition but overall held up really really well i trained for about four months in these before doing the jmt training to the best of my ability in southeastern ontario we don't have mountains so i did what i could it obviously did not prepare me enough because i had major what I thought was ankle issues at the time with these. Okay, so it turned out not to be an ankle issue because I had this pain for about a month after I came home. Apparently, some people have an extra bone right here in their feet. Not everybody has it, just some people have it. It's literally called an accessory something bone. Anyways, uh, double check maybe if you have that bone because it was just rubbing a weird spot on the shoe that was causing me immense bruising and so much pain. Like I said, it was hurting for like a month after I came back. I couldn't wear any flat shoes, not zero drop shoes. I had to wear like super ultra padded archy shoes. And even then it was like, it was so bad, but I had no idea that this was a bone that people had. So there you go. Double check if you have that bone. But like I said, that's not the fault of the Ultras. And I honestly can't really fault them for much. They're super, super lightweight, very breathable. You are going to get a lot of dirt and sand in it um, just because of the mesh. But I think that's unavoidable. If you are using gaiters, they integrate seamlessly, especially the Dirty Girl ones. They have a hook for the front of the gaiter. They Velcro right into the back. Super, super easy. Yeah, I don't really have anything bad to say about them. I will probably try to, well, I'll get another pair and I'll start sort of breaking them in slowly on shorter trails of varying terrain just to get my feet used to them. I will probably continue to wear boots in the meantime. I really do like these boots. They were great. But otherwise, yeah, I just found that the Ultras were like a super blend of everything that I wanted. They weren't super minimalistic. They weren't as like, super cushy as the Brooks. I tried some Brooks ones and they just felt like, I don't know if I'm already unstable, it felt like I would just, I didn't want to like feel like I was walking on a cloud and like slip off. I still wanted to have a little bit of ground feel. Um, and this does have the removable for what it's worth, like the, the rock plate in here. Ooh, I haven't touched this since having these. Um, so it does provide a little bit of underfoot protection as well. I know some people do say that the compression in the midsole just kind of drops it flattens over time i didn't find that but uh, on a trail like the jmt that might be unavoidable where you're hiking for like 14 hours a day all day the shoe doesn't really have the time to decompress 
but I thought it served its purpose very well. I would recommend these or other ultras for sure if you don't have problems with zero drop. Um, definitely try them out first. I know they can cause some calf, calf issues, Achilles issues, if you're not used to that. I walk in a lot of flat shoes anyways, so that was not a big deal for me. So yeah, those are the five main items that I took on the JMT. Some were bought specifically for the JMT, others I had previously. Some items I will use again going forward, some not so much. I will definitely stick with my Hyperlite, but if you have any suggestions or let me know the bag that you use. I like to say I'm open to trying new bags, but at this point, like I love this one so much. I also don't have a lot of money and gear gets more expensive. Uh, the more light you get, but yeah, let me know your experience with the gear that you brought. Uh, what did you use for a tent? I guess that's the one big thing that we will be looking at for next year. Has anybody used the Hyperlite tent? I've had such a good experience with this bag. I've had such a good experience with this bag that I wonder if the tent is also good, but I haven't really seen anybody with it. I've seen a lot of people with the duplexes. So if you like any of those, have any recommendations, let me know. Hopefully some of this gear can help you, whether you're doing the JMT or another trail, or if this just helps you avoid getting the MSR and having giant failures. Again, maybe user error on my part. Now I know to carry all the repair kits. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.